Good morning, friends, and welcome to another episode of the Block Thrasher Daily Crypto Update. Every weekday, I make a podcast and video to keep you informed and to help shatter the complexities of crypto, to keep it simple with news, commentary, analysis, and education. And today's no different. It's Monday, May 17th, 8.22 a.m. here in the hot, wet, humid Houston area. Going to be here for about another week, and then it's back on the road again up to the Northwest, and I'm excited about that. I can't wait. I've just about had enough of bugs, the snakes. There's a cotton mouth, a dead cotton mouth, a small 12-inch long cotton mouth just outside the door, <laughs> still sitting there on the ground. I believe it was run over by a vehicle, but they're all over the place. You have to be careful everywhere you go. Open up a cupboard late at night, especially outside, storage place. Got to be extremely careful. And the bugs, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes. And there's cockroaches and you just can't do anything. And the people down here, they're just like, oh yeah, that's just normal. You're going to have cockroaches. <laughs> anyway, it's a beautiful area. I'm looking outside the window and it's nothing but green forest trees. It's beautiful, super flat. There's no mountains or hills of any kind. Everything is green because it's it's wet, wet, wet. It rains and it rains. And it's, it's like a swamp down here. If you've never been to the Houston area, you know, there's one of the biggest uh, suburbs of Houston is called the Woodlands. It's where a lot of the oil, people from the oil industry live. And it's a beautiful place. It's interesting though, because every single road, every store, the way they built the place is that they it's in the it's in a forest and they left the trees up. So they so you're driving down the roads and all you see is trees. It's like you're on a back country road in the forest driving through trees, but there's a Walmart just to your right and a McDonald's to your left and a gas station, but you can't see it and there's no signage, so you don't know what's there. There's just driveways that you pass every now and then. It's interesting. And first when you arrive, you think this is kind of cool because you know, it, it just feels like you're in the forest all the time. But after a while, it gets to be a little bit of annoyance because you don't know where anything's at. You can't build like you can with other places where after a while you learn the community, you learn the area, and you sort of have an idea of where everything is, a map in your head, let's say. That doesn't happen here in the Woodlands area. Now, now I'm further out. I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the country, uh, further north from the Woodlands and out of, out of the Houston area. But... It's similar. And, and it's just, I don't know, it's a fascinating thing. I don't think I've ever quite been in a place like that. And I don't think I particularly like it either. Anyway, enough about that. We're here today to talk about what's going on in the cryptocurrency market. And unless you've been on vacation somewhere where you have absolutely no internet connection, no access to any kind of news, no ability to see what's happening or going on, you already know that we had a very painful, painful, we'll call it a pecuniary distress <laughs> hit us over the weekend all because of our buddy. I don't know if buddy is even the right term at this point. Mr. Tesla himself, Elon Musk, right? You've probably heard already. Elon Musk comes out on Twitter swinging, saying, we're no longer accepting Bitcoin for Tesla vehicles because of the environmental impact, because of environmental concerns, because of the amount of energy that mining Bitcoin uses, right? <clears throat> and so obviously everything just lights up and this causes, at least allegedly causes, we never know the true source, right, of what's going on in the market. But for, for all we can tell, this causes a massive dump. Bitcoin, currently at this moment, down 23.1% for the week. But it's not at its lowest. It went down. It's at 44,824 currently. It went down to a low of 42,000. But then Musk says, no, no, we haven't sold. Tesla hasn't sold our Bitcoin holdings. As of yet, and the price goes up a couple thousand dollars. What's also interesting is he comes out and he says, I'm working with the Dogecoin devs 
to try to improve the system and improve efficiency and blah, 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 blah. Okay. All right. Personally, I think this is ridiculous and a wrongheaded approach because you can't just, and that's the thing, kind of, you can make changes and updates to blockchains, to Bitcoin or whatever. But the idea behind it is that it's supposed to be a community driven type of thing. And it's supposed to be difficult and really hard. If one entity or one individual can come along like Musk and essentially take over the governance of the system, then that's not a, that's not what we want. That's not a crypto that we want. Simple as that. It's, it's then become too centralized, right? In addition to that, it's a proof of work crypto. I highly doubt they're going to tran, you know, turn this sucker into a proof of stake and fix the inflationary problems and all that. Now, maybe so. Maybe it could happen. I don't know. Anyway, that's what's going on. That's what's happening right now, currently, as we speak. And what's also happening, again, possibly related, maybe not, not quite sure, as we never are with these things, totally 100%. It's the proof of stake coins that are faring better through this dump. Primarily Cardano, which is still up 19.6% in the last seven days. Now it is in the last 24 hours succumbing to these market forces and it is down 9.7%. It hit an all time new high just over two dollars and 46 cents or something to that something in that range currently two dollars and 12 cents but what's going on with the rest of the market let's take a look we had a total market capitalization drop of 6.8 percent but listen to this we're still at 2.166 trillion dollars for the total market capitalization yes we were up to 2.5 but this is still phenomenal this still is not end of bull run, bad, bad bear market situation, 2.166 trillion. I mean, it wasn't that long ago that we were wondering, well, we hit $2 trillion and we did, and then we surpassed it. And so overall, that's actually pretty substantial and looking good. Moving on to the dominance, Bitcoin continues to fall. Currently 38.7%. And what's interesting is Ethereum has dropped a bit too. It is now 18.6%. Mm-hmm. Ethereum is currently trading at $3,457.80. So down, down almost $500, over $500 from where it's been the last few weeks, hovering right around $4,000 down a total of 11.8% on the week and 6.9% on the last 24 hours. Binance coin is 529.59 cents, down almost 20% on the week as well, down 19.4%. So here's the thing. People are speculating that the reason Cardano is up, Solana is another that is up 9.7% on the week anyway, and Matic up 79.5% is because people are looking for greener cryptos, right? The proof of stake. However, there's a little bit of a problem with that in that there's a bunch of these others like Polkadot. Now Polkadot is only down 2%. What else do we have? Well, in the top 10, actually, when we're talking about proof of stake, we're pretty much looking at Cardano, Polkadot, I did in the top 10, and then Solana, we dropped down. So the point I'm making here is I'm not quite sure, it's not clear as to whether it's people looking for these greener cryptos or other forces, because there is an issue with Cardano that could be causing its current pump. And that is 
that Mark Cuban interacted with Charles Hoskinson on Twitter over the weekend. And he asked Hoskinson, what can you do with Cardano today? Well, before I get into that, let's just finish with market prices because I've only got two stories today and it's all about Cardano. Oh, by the way, very important for me to say, and I forgot, I am still, if you've been listening to the podcast the last couple of days, I've been talking about this special that I'm going to do, which is going to be all about the Cardano ecosystem. Well, I intended to do it on Saturday. Still doing research, couldn't do it. Spent a ton of time, hours. Sunday, I was not feeling well Sunday, and I still, and I just did not get the time in to finish all the research. There is so much going on. It is massive. It's huge on the Cardano ecosystem, and there was no way I could do it. My head was throbbing. Very odd. I don't know what was going on because I never get sick. I rarely have headaches, but yesterday was an exception. So today I will be finishing the research. Plus, I don't want to just make you guys aware of all of these projects that are launching. I want to give you good analysis on what I think about them and where they could be going. And there's just so many. So I'm going to finish that up today. I'll probably record that today, if not tomorrow. I'm starting to learn that I shouldn't make promises because sometimes you get into this stuff and it's just, it's deep and you have to keep going and there's so much there. But anyway, it's coming. I promise you, it's coming as a podcast and a video, but also with a a post on the website where I will have links to everything, where you can buy these projects if they if they can be bought, where you can if there's an airdrop, I'm going to let you know about that. If there's an airdrop plan, or if there's a way to to get some of the token through a you know, there's this new thing called initial stake offering where you stake your Cardano in a staking pool and get some. Anyway, I'm going to cover all of that, like everything, all their social media links that you can see in farm. So it's going to be super useful for you guys. And that that's coming. All right. XRP, $1.50. Cardano, $2.11. Dogecoin, $0.49. Cents, $49.5940. Down 12.5%. Polkadot, $39.44. Bitcoin Cash, $1,107. Litecoin, $285. Uniswap, $34.93. Everything is down 10, not everything, obviously, but everything in every, yes, everything. Let's rephrase it. I was going to say not everything on the week, but yes, everything in the last 24 hours down from 2.6 being the lowest in the top 10, at least with XRP to 11.8% with Polkadot, which is the loser in the last 24 hours, but it's all down, chain link down. 24.8% on the week, down 9.9% in the last 24 hours, 38.75. Stellar. Stellar is still being an exception. Stellar and Solana, both up 9.3 and 9.7 respectively in the last week, but down on the last 24 hours. Stellar down 11.4%. It's currently 68 cents. And Solana down 1.3%, currently 48.32 Ethereum $89, VeChain $0.16, cents, Polygon $1.76, Theta down 15% on the week, $10.16. So it's just a bloody, bloody, bloody weekend. It's everything's down. Everything, everything, everything. This hurts. This is painful. What's going to happen? Uh, I think we're going to bounce back here pretty quick. Oh, gas prices are nice and low, by the way. Relative, relative to where they've been. 62 for standard, 62 GUE. That would indicate that there's not a lot of activity going on, people pulling out. We definitely have stabilized at this point. I think we're going to see an upswing here pretty soon. There's already been reports of chain analysis showing that as we see each time we have this kind of drop, the institutional investors come in and start to buy, buy, buy. So my, my word to you is don't panic. Don't panic sell, especially, you know, I, 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 I get it that what happens is people that have been in the crypto space for a long time, they can weather these things for a number of reasons. One, they have the experience to know that crypto is a volatile space. And yet when these drops occur, we tend to just buy and ride it out. 
And, and you know, it's not hard when you got in on projects three, four years ago when they were back, basically nothing. You're still seeing insane gains. But for all the newcomers that have just come in because of hearing about Doge because of Musk or Cuban or whatever, and, and then they bought Doge and maybe they made a little bit of money, maybe they didn't, but Doge has just been sidelining now for weeks. And so buying other things, right? On Coinbase and Robinhood and Weeble and just get, getting in, getting initiated, but buying stuff. Uh, and then a downturn like this of 10 or 20% can, can be, can be scary, right? And can create some legit fear. Ah, I'm losing all my money. Well, you don't lose until you sell. And so my word to you is just sit tight, hodl, and wait, and wait, you know? But as, as always, if you're new to the space, you should never invest what you can't stand to lose. It's just a fact of the matter, because it is still a nascent market that is easily manipulated or in, influenced, might be a better word, by these actors like Musk. Or by some really negative FUD news coming out of a reg regulatory agency or something to this effect. What we've seen is that if you hold, but it could be a long time sometimes, especially if this does end up materializing, if a bear market ends up materializing is what I meant to say. It could be a couple of years. It could be four years before you see your holdings increase by 100%. Or it could not be. I've been arguing for quite some time that we have such massive adoption occurring and so many new people coming into the space that we're not going to drop down to some of the lows that we've seen before or have as significant of a drop, right? The market isn't going to be as volatile moving forward as more people come in as it grows and as it matures and as institutions get involved. It stabilizes things. All right, let's move on to these stories of the day real quick, just two for you guys. Did I already cover the word of the day? I mentioned it and I didn't cover it. Pecuniary, pecuniary. I said there's some pecuniary pain going on right now. And that's right. Pecuniary means of or relating to money. P-E-C-U-N-I-A-R-Y. Pecuniary. Pecuniary, relating to money, comes from the Latin adjective pecuniarius, a derivative of pecunia, property, possessions, wealth, money. It is a derivative of pe pecu, piku, flock, herd, farm animals, livestock being a very important source of wealth in early farming societies. Good word. Pecuniary. All right, on to the stories. Cardano. Both stories today actually have to do with Cardano because Cardano is the news of the day. Aside from Tesla, I'm sorry, Musk and his, what was I calling it? Muskos. Rissi? Muskos Rissi. Something like that. <laughs> Let's see if I have it. I wrote it down somewhere. How to say it properly. Anyway, it's just a merging of Musk with hypocrisy. Because he's been making statements that are contradictory. Taking positions that are contradictory to his own company. Arguably not particularly green. When you dig deep into batteries battery technology and the disposal of batteries, the creation of batteries, the disposal of batteries. And on top of that, the vehicles use electricity, just like mining, proof of work mining does. Anyway, we've talked about that. Led by Cardano, green cryptos rise as Bitcoin wider market sinks. Ada price holds strong as investors shift to greener cryptocurrencies and Cardano smart contracts get so set to launch blockchain into DeFi and NFTs. Cardano stood out over the weekend with its native cryptocurrency, ADA, reaching all-time high of $2.46, even as most of the crypto market remained engulfed in a sea of red, with the entire cryptocurrency market losing over $300 billion in value. Ranked number six just weeks ago, Cardano has leapfrogged Dogecoin and Tether 
and is now the fourth largest cryptocurrency in the world with a market cap of $70 billion, according to CoinMarketCap. Cardano's price surge comes as Bitcoin, the original cryptocurrency, shed 26% of its value over the past week. Other major cryptocurrencies have taken a nosedive in value as well. Ethereum, which still currently operates as a proof-of-work blockchain, has fallen from its all-time high of $4,360 on May 12th to US $3,290 at the time of writing. Binance Coin, Dogecoin, and Ripple's XRP are also dipping dramatically by 24%, 10%, and 13.7% respectively. Breaking above $2 for the first time on May 15th, Cardano's native token, ADA, kept rising as market sentiment towards some cryptocurrencies continued to sour following recent news that Tesla's CEO, Elon Musk, is looking for more energy-efficient alternatives to Bitcoin and now no longer accepts BTCS payments for the purchase of his company's vehicles. Another factor in the deepening crypto correction could be the news about a possible U.S. Department of Justice and Internal Revenue Service investigation into Binance, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, raising concerns in the crypto market about a potential tax and regulatory backlash. Musk's environmental concerns about Bitcoin, though criticized by other prominent crypto personalities as being misinformed or misguided, may be one reason that the much more energy-efficient proof-of-stake cryptocurrencies like Cardano and Polygon Matic have continued to see major price growth. Polygon's Matic is one of the few cryptocurrencies in the green today, up 1.5% in the last 24 hours and over 70% for the week. Cuban and Hoskinson talk on ADA, and I've already alluded to all this stuff, but we'll just cover some of the details here. As this article did exactly the same and, and just is delivering in a, in a really well way what I would have, what I am delivering as well. As meme investment continues to drive cryptocurrency markets, eh, Cardano may have gotten a boost over the weekend when billionaire entrepreneur Mark Cuban voiced his interest in ADA on social media. The Dallas, the Dallas Mavericks owner engaged in a Twitter conversation with Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson on May 15th to discuss ADA, the ADA coin's utility. Cuban, who along with Elon Musk has been responsible for much of the attention shown to Dogecoin, asked Hoskinson what ADA could actually be used for. Hoskinson responded with a brief but detailed pitch in one tweet, which was later followed up with a 12-minute video to further flesh out his response to Cuban. He said the Cardano price surge started from the Twitter conversation between Mark Cuban and Charles Hoskinson, founder of Cardano, where they discussed the utilities of ADA. Oh, this was Toyo Shang is stating this. Oh, he's the CEO of AAX Exchange. You know, it's interesting. I'd want to go back and look. Because I was following both closely, and I feel like the Cardano price was already starting to pump before this interaction occurred. Entrepreneurs publicly talking up certain cryptos is becoming more prevalent, Shang added. It is generally positive for crypto education, especially in Cardano's case. Given the fickleness of the markets and pump and dump culture associated with other celebrity-backed coins, Dogecoin being the most famous example, Shang added, it would be great if there is a way to lock these celebrities' investments to these tokens for a committed period of time, considering the scale of their influence, or else it is healthier for... No. No, 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 no. It always amazes me when people come out and they want to do things that are just clearly like... Ah. Trying to do something that is potentially good for the market, like forcing celebrities to lock up their holdings... For a period of time, it just flies in the face of freedom and free market. No, bad idea. Besides, Cuban just admitted that he and his son bought something like 4,000 Dogecoin only, which is like fifteen, sixteen hundred dollars fiat worth of Dogecoin. He doesn't hold a mass. Maybe he had, maybe the Mavericks do. His business does because they were accepting Dogecoin for payment. But th this whole thing, no, bad idea. In any case, 
Moving on. May 2021 may be a period that will go down in Cardano's history books as the fourth largest cryptocurrency by market cap continues surging to new all-time highs in the past two weeks alone. Cardano's latest all-time high was reached on Sunday when ADA prices peaked at $2.46. Cardano is also slated to launch its Alonzo hard fork this month, which will mark the end of the Shelly area. The network's move to complete decentralization and the blockchain's entrance into the Gogan area which is around the halfway mark of the network's roadmap. Cardano's Gogan era is set to implement secure smart contract functionality into Cardano's blockchain and will be based on the Plutus custom build programming framework. The upgrade, which will happen with the upcoming Alonzo hard fork, will be an important development for Cardano as the introduction of smart contracts will finally give developers the tools necessary to build decentralized finance, dApps, and provide non-fungible token NFT services using the Cardano blockchain in a space currently dominated by Ethereum. While Cardano is already capable of faster transactions and much lower fees than Ethereum, the blockchain's upcoming smart contract capabilities could be a tipping point for Cardano, analysts say, especially as Ethereum's transition into a proof-of-stake network has faced several major delays. And that's right, when Cardano pulls that off here in the coming month, it will be the number one proof of stake smart contract platform because Ethereum hasn't hasn't pulled that off yet. And who knows when they will? I'm sure they will. And maybe somebody does know. Maybe there's, I mean, I know there's been dates promised, but as the article states, this has often been delayed. Despite the Ethereum blockchain undergoing big upgrades in 2021, with the Berlin fork completed and the London hard fork set for July, that are improving scalability, lowering gas fees, and allowing transactions to be more affordable, many rival blockchain platforms are on the rise, including Polkadot, Solana, Binance Smart Chain, and now Cardano. In addition, the parent company of Cardano, Input Output Hong Kong, has recently partnered with World Mobile Group to democratize access to digital, financial, and social services in Africa through its blockchain digital identity solution, Atala Prism, starting in Tanzania. IOHK also announced this week that it had partnered with the Ethiopian government to create a system to track student performance in local schools on the Cardano blockchain. Cardano, next in line for $200 billion market cap? Question mark. As ADA's price rallied on Saturday, prominent crypto analyst Benjamin Cohen tweeted a poll asking the crypto community, what crypto will be the third coin to make it to 200 billion market cap? The poll, which has garnered nearly 15,000 votes, found Cardano's ADA to be the clear favorite to be next in line to surpass the $200 billion millstone. $200 billion milestone beating out another beating out other candidates binance coin doge and ripple cardano's ada is leading the poll with 59 percent of the votes with binance coin in second with 23.1 percent okay let's run the numbers really quickly because that's an interesting hypothesis let's say that cardano makes it to $200 billion market cap, which is only half of the market cap of Ethereum. So that's not that insane of an idea. It's actually a pretty reasonable idea. So we have a total circulating supply with Cardano that is at, I'm gonna have to jump into, my memory says it's about $32 billion, but let's just, Make sure circulating supply. Yeah, 32 billion. Okay, 32 billion. So if we have a 200 billion dollar market cap divided by 32 billion, that puts Cardano at six dollars and 25 cents. Which is crazy to think that if Cardano were to match, just roughly match Ethereum's market cap, we're looking at like 13 dollar, 14 dollar Cardano. Totally possible. 
Cardano is targeting billions, not millions of users, says creator Charles Hoskinson. Input output IOHK CEO Charles Hoskinson is emphasizing that Cardano is being built to serve billions, not millions of users around the globe. In a new video to his 429,700 followers, he says that the motivation behind the development of the fourth largest crypto asset is based on two key questions. The point of Cardano is to ask, where do we need to go? What do we need to do to have an ecosystem with a billion people, not an ecosystem with a million, and be able to sustainably provide a financial operating system for that? With Cardano aiming to service a significant part of the global population, Hoskinson unveils the reason why they chose to redesign the smart contract model from the ground up. What we decided to do, he said, is to rebuild the entire smart contract model. One, because it's not secure. And you can see that with the billions of dollars of customers' funds that have been lost because of unsecured hacked apps, rug pulls, etc. Two, it's not sustainable. Cost predictability, high gas fees that applications have. Hoskinson also highlights that Cardano's smart contract model will allow millions of developers around the world to participate in the ecosystem. And this is huge. This is huge. And this is taking time. And this is why it's important. So listen to this part here. There are only 80,000 Solidity developers. So Solidity is the programming language on Ethereum. There's 80,000 Solidity developers. There are 25 million developers throughout the world who are .NET developers and Java developers and so forth. So how do we bring those people in and how do we get them to use their tools, techniques, and languages that they've written collectively? Trillions of dollars worth of software throughout the last 40 years into the Cardano ecosystem. And see, there's, there's all these people out there. If you look, there's these, there's these, you know, Ethereum maxis or Bitcoin maxis, but pri primarily Ethereum maximalists that go after Cardano. They're the ghost vaporware, blah, 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 you know, ad nauseum. What can you actually do on Cardano today? It's like, who gives a crap? That's the wrong question. A better question is the one here that Hoskinson is pointing out. Who can develop on Ethereum? With what programming languages? Solidity programming languages. People who learn Solidity. All right. So there's already 25 million of these developers out there that use these other programming languages, .NET and Java, et cetera, et cetera, and more. And so what Cardano is doing is they've created a system through the KEVM where all of these developers can use the languages they already know. Boom, on board like that. Using the tools that they already know. So this just will accelerate and leapfrog the development of smart contracts and dApps onto the Cardano platform. But it took time. It, take, it, took, it takes a lot of time. And, 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 and the, this rigorous testing approach that Cardano is doing to do these two things that he's talking about. Number one, create a much more secure environment where we don't see these rug pulls. We don't see these scams happening. And number two, Create a system in which these developers could just be onboarded super quickly using the languages and the tools that they already know. This is huge. As for IOHK's recent entry in Africa, Hoskinson says that their project in the continent is just getting started. Ethiopia took us over four years to negotiate during a civil war. And despite that, and despite it being listed in the bottom 5% of countries of ease of doing business, we were able to close a deal for 5 million people that's going to grow to over 20 million people, which is one of the largest, if not the largest single deals in our industry. Okay, so I would like in all of this, just to simplify it down to strategy, what's happening here is some people are getting all excited because they've won battles in the cryptocurrency space. Oh, well, we got our smart contract platform launched and we've got these projects coming onto the ecosystem. And we're, you know, all right. But, but just because you win a battle here and there, doesn't mean you win the war. A battle is now. The battles are now. You face the battle in front of you. And you either win or lose. But in order to win the war, wars can take time, years, maybe even decades. Strategic planning. Maybe you're not winning battles currently, but you're building your army. You're, you're reinforcing your supplies. You're stockpiling the necessities to get you through, to keep fighting. And sometimes wars are not won by the strongest contender in the, in the beginning. They're won by the nation or army 
that can continue to fight because they have the resources and the strength and the capability. And I would relate all of what's going on in these platform wars with the smart contract and dApps to that. The military, the army, the country, the state, whatever, the general that runs out into battle because right now he has an edge but takes significant loss of supply from the supply chain or of life is then weakened and unable to fight later battles. You've got to pick your battles is another way to say it. And you build and build and build and build and strength. You know, it's a long game. And, and there, you know, you look at geopolitically around the world, but look at China and the U.S. right now. And, you know, it's a little bit frightening because it's pretty clear that China has more of that long term strategy, right? And they'd be foolish. They would have been extremely foolish a decade ago to get into a, a military fight with the United States. Now less so. 15, 20 years from now, who knows? Maybe they'll have the edge significantly as they build, 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 build. So anyway, just trying to bring to you some of my big picture analysis of what I believe is going on here. There's either two, there's two possibilities with Cardano and with Hoskinson and IOHK and everything that's going on. Either one, they're liars <laughs> and nothing that they're promising is going to ever be delivered, which I think is incredibly unlikely and very, very, very low possibility. Because as I will reveal in this special, you've already got a whole bunch of projects lining up to develop, already developing setting the stage work for what's coming with smart, when smart, you know, when Alonzo hard fork goes live and smart contracts. Two possibilities, either they're just lying and none of it's going to ever happen. They will deliver on nothing or number two, they will deliver everything that's been stated and it's going to dominate. It's going to be faster, cheaper, more secure and attract hordes of developer developers and new apps. DeFi applications and all this kind of thing, which is what I, which is what I believe is going to happen. But it's going to be fun to watch, and that's why I enjoy this so much. And every day, there's a little bit more news here and there. All right, wrapping things up with our last segment. We're almost done with the cryptocurrency glossary of terminology. Today, we're in the T's. Taint. The percentage of cryptocurrency in an account that can be traced to another account. So, because blockchains are publicly, public, you know, publicly available distributed ledgers that in which chain analysis can be done and transactions can be seen going from address to address to address, it is possible that some of the some of the Bitcoin that you hold, let's just say for the sake of argument, was previously held by a criminal or by somebody on the terrorist watch list or something to this effect. And so this is what they're talking about. You know, it's possible because law enforcement likes to do this sort of thing. <laughs> they even do it with civil, F, uh, civil, what do they call it? Civil forfeiture of assets, civil asset forfeiture or something to this effect. All right, let's say you're driving across the country in the United States and you, for one reason or another, decide that you want to carry $20,000 of cash rather than rather than uh, leaving it in the bank. And you get pulled over by an officer and they search your vehicle for drugs or something to this effect and they find this $20,000 of cash. Well, they can, they can, uh, they can do what's called civil forfeiture where they can just take it. And then most cash, almost all cash, physical cash, has traces of drugs on it. So they can find that trace of drugs and they can say, well, this money was used for drugs and we think maybe you're, you know, using it for drugs and this sort of thing or whatever, and we're just going to take it. And it's nearly impossible to get it back. And there's just all kinds of stories about that happening. Well, with crypto, it's kind of a similar thing. Potentially, they can say, now nah, this is turning to crypto. And so what we're seeing is then some 
of the centralized exchanges where maybe you just want to go cash out your Coinbase or something and you try and then they say, well, no, we can't cash this out because it's been tainted. Or if you use a coin join or some sort of other privacy mechanism to sort of erase that, that history, then all oh, we're not going to, we're not going to let you cash that out in fiat either through our system. So this is a possibility moving forward and it's definitely a concern. And it's one of the reasons why it would be better if all crypto was just private and there was no traceability like that. Although again, that would be an issue that governments would not particularly like and would probably try to come down on it even more potentially. So it's kind of a give and take kind of a catch 22, but that's what tainted is about taint. Tangle. The Tangle is a blockchain alternative developed by IOTA using directed acyclic graphs, which only built, which are also sometimes just referred to as DAG, the directed acyclic graphs, which only builds in one single direction and in a way that it never repeats and is quantum computing resistant. Technical analysis, also called trend analysis, TA for short is an evaluation method involving statistical analysis of market activity, such as price and volume. Charts and other tools are used to identify patterns to underpin and drive investment decisions. Now, I have said numerous times, if you've been listening, watching or listening to the podcast for a while, that I do find technical analysis to be an interesting, uh, what would you call it? Not exercise, but uh, uh, words not coming to my mind. It's an interesting area of study. However, this weekend illustrates the this illustrates the problem of relying on technical analysis in the cryptocurrency market. What do I mean? What I mean is the market is so small. That one entity, one individual, Elon Musk, let's just accept for the sake of argument that it's true that his statements are what caused this market crash, can defy all technical analysis, right? So there's somebody out there who's using technical analysis and they're talking about, well, these stochastics and this that are, you know, the moving average, and the, you know, all this, all the stuff that's used by technical analysis. They're like, oh, this is the time to get in and to short and to go long on Bitcoin or to go short on whatever, whatever, using their technical analysis. And they do a futures contract. And then Elon Musk pops on Twitter and in an instant with one tweet crashes the market. All technical analysis just obliterated. And this is the problem with technical analysis. Now, if you have a a very mature, long-standing, well-developed market with tons of institutional actors who who all play by rules as well. You know, they they're they're fairly predictable because because they all think the same. Because they're it's not like in crypto where you have this horde of retail investors, and even in the traditional market, you see something like with the Wall Street bets guys or whatever, right? The hedge fund decides to short GameStop because of the analysis that they're doing. Blah, then all this group of retailers just come in and bust them. Well, it's the same thing with crypto. You've got all this army of retail investors still that just panics easily and trades emotionally. And this also, the volatility of the market. Anyway, enough said about that. I just... You know, there are these guys out there that you can follow, you know, if you want to. One of the most famous, notorious even maybe would be the word, technical analysis, Tone Vase. And I watched his videos for years. And my conclusion was he's right about half the time because that's how often you're right with technical analysis. About half the time. You know, which is just as good as guessing, essentially. Moving on. Testnet, an alternative blockchain used for developers for testing think long term tlt a mindset where you have a longer term investment horizon of months to years 
Well, another way we like to talk about that is the low time preference and the high time preference. This is gentlemen. Originally an error in writing the full this is it, gentlemen. It is now used as an introduction for good news. This is gentlemen. Throughput. Throughput is how many actions can be completed in a given time frame. Ticker. An abbreviation used to uniquely identify cryptocurrencies, C symbol, so like BTC, ETH, ADA. Time lock, lock time, a condition for a transaction to only be processed at a certain time or block on the blockchain. Timestamp, a form of identification for when a certain transaction occurred, usually with date and time of day and accurate to fractions of a second. Tip set, a tip set is a set rather than a chain of blocks that make up a blockchain. Token, a digital unit designed with utility in mind, providing access and use of a larger crypto economic system. It does not have a store of value on its own, but is made so that software can be developed around it. Token generation event, the time at which a token is issued. Token swap, token swaps can refer to one of two things. One, direct exchange of a certain amount of one cryptocurrency token for another between users facilitated by a special exchange service, or two, migration of a cryptocurrency token built on top of one blockchain platform to a different blockchain. And so we're going to see that happen here in the future, and I will keep you guys abreast of that. If you are AGI holders, the Singularity.net token, AGI is going to be doing a one-for-one -one exchange and changing the ticker symbol to AGIX, and they're going to be launching on the Cardano blockchain as they move from Ethereum, which was not able to provide what they believe they needed onto the Cardano blockchain, which just had the speed and scalability, low fees, etc. required. Tokenize, the process by which real-world assets are turned into something of digital value called a token, often subsequently able to offer ownership of parts of this asset to different owners. Tor, T-O-R, Tor. Tor is a decentralized network that anonymizes users' web traffic by encrypting it and routing it through a series of relays before it reaches its final destination. Total supply. Oh, by the way, with Tor, if you are not using the Brave browser already, start using it. It's much better, especially in regards to privacy, and it has Tor built in. So in addition to a VPN, you can use Tor. Total supply, the total amount of coins in existence right now, minus any coins that have been verifiably burned. See circulating supply and max supply. And you know, where this gets confusing, confusing is sometimes people will think that total supply is the same as max supply, and it's not. So that, remember that. The total amount of coins in existence right now, that's the total supply, minus any coins that have been verifiably burned. So that's the total supply, okay? Circulating supply is the, is the amount of coins that are available on the exchange and held by, so there, there might be part of the total supply, for instance, that's locked up in a development fund or something like that. Maybe it's released over time. The max supply is the total amount that will ever, ever exist. Trade volume, the amount of the cryptocurrency that has been traded in the last 24 hours. Trading tournament, trading tournaments are unique crypto trading campaigns organized by cryptocurrency exchanges, encouraging users to trade more to win incentives, such as tokens, hardware wallets, and more. Transaction, TX, the act of exchanging cryptocurrencies on a blockchain. Transaction fee, a payment for using the blockchain to transact. Trustless. A property of the blockchain where no participant needs to trust any other participant for transactions to be enforced as intended. Tumblr, another name for a mixing service, which is a privacy tool, right? Where you send in your crypto into the Tumblr service and it mixes it up with a bunch of others and it outputs it in a single transaction that gets sent back. So then the origin of where it came from can't be, can't be known or traced to chain analysis. Two-factor authentication. 
Two-factor authentication 2FA is a method of access that requires two different forms of authentication. Okay, friends, that is a wrap for today. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a phenomenal day and look for the soon to be released Cardano special where I'm going to cover all of the projects that are launching on the Cardano ecosystem. It's going to be huge. It's going to be massive. It's going to be good. Look for it. Be sure to tune in. Love and appreciate you all. I hope you have a phenomenal week as we launch this new week today. Look forward to talking with you tomorrow. Have a great day. See you soon. Bye now.